you guys for coming to see art tonight. We appreciate you being here. Tonight we're here to listen to Miss Kim give a lesson on hope. So here she is. Hi, good evening. My name is Kim. I'm the daughter of the one true king and I struggle with codependency and grief and loss. I'm so excited this evening to be doing lesson number three, which is on hope. Principle two, earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, verse 4. Step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore our sanity. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to, to fill, in order to fulfill his good purpose, Philippians 2 verse 13. In principle two, we earnestly believe that God exists, that we matter to him, and that he has the power to help us recover. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us, anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Psalm 62 verse 5 says, Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. In the first principle, we admitted we were powerless. It is through his admission of our, powers, of our powerlessness that we are able to believe and receive God's power to help us recover. We do need to be careful, though, not to just cover the bottomless pits of our hurts, hangups, and habits with layers of denial or try some quick fix. Instead, we need to keep those hurts exposed to the light so that through God's power, they can truly heal. It's in the second principle that we come to believe that God exists, that we are important to him, that we are able to find the one true higher power, Jesus Christ. We come to understand that God wants to fill our lives with his love, his joy, and his presence. One of my favorite parables is in Luke 15, the story of the prodigal son. Though the story is about a father's love for his lost son, it is really a picture of God, the father's love for you. God's love is looking for you no matter how lost you feel. God's searching love can find you no matter how many times you have fallen into sin. God's hand of mercy, God's hands of mercy are reaching out to pick you up and to love and to forgive you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where you will find hope. And that's why I call principle two the hope principle. Let's look at the word hope and what it means in principle two. H, higher power. O, openness to change. P, P power to change. And E, expect to change. H stands for higher power. Our higher power is the one and only true higher power and he has a name, Jesus Christ. In the past, you may have believed in Jesus' existence, and you may have even attended church, but what you will find in principle two is a personal relationship with Christ. You will see that Jesus desires a hands-on, day-to-day, moment-to-moment relationship with us. Romans 11, verse 36 says, Everything comes from God alone. Everything lives by his power. Many people today believe their doubts and doubt their beliefs. Have you ever seen an idea? Have you ever seen love? Have you ever seen faith? Of course not. You, have, you may have seen acts of faith and love, but the real things, the lasting things in the world are the invisible spiritual realities. This leads us to the first four words of the second step. We came to believe 
saying that we came to believe in anything describes a process. Belief is a result of consideration, doubt, reasoning, and concluding. The next letter in hope is O, which stands for openness to change. What is the process that leads to solid belief, which leads you to change your life? Let's look at the first four steps or first four words and step two again. We came to believe. We came. We took the first step when we attended our first recovery meeting. We came to. We stopped denying our hurts, our hangups, and our habits. We came to believe. We started to believe and receive God's power to help us recover. Hope is openness to change. Sometimes we are afraid to change, even, our pa- even if our past was painful. We resist change because of our fear for the unknown or in our despair we think we don't deserve anything better. Here's the good news. Hope opens doors where despair closes them. Hope discovers what can be done instead of grumbling about what can't be done. Throughout your life, you will continue to encounter hurts and trials that you are powerless to change. But with God's help, you can be open to allow those circumstances in situations to change you, to make you better, not bitter. Ephesians 4 verse 23 gives us a challenge to that end. Now, your attitudes and thoughts must all be constantly changing for the better. You must be a new and a different person. How will you do that? The letter P tells us about the power to change. In the past, we may have wanted to change and were unable to do so. We could not free ourselves from our hurts, our habits, or our hangups. In principle two, we understand that God's power can change us and our situation. Philippians 4 verse 13 confirms it. For I can do everything God asks me to with the help of Christ, who gives me the strength and the power. Power to change comes from God's grace. You see, hope draws its power from a deep trust in God, like that of the psalmist who wrote, Lead me, teach me, for you are God who gives me salvation. I have no hope except in you. Psalm 25, verse 5. In principle 2, we begin to understand that God's power can change us and our situation. And And once we tap into that power, right actions, Christ-like actions, will follow naturally as byproducts of working the principles and following the one and only higher, Jesus Christ. The last letter in hope is E, expect to change. Remember, you are only at the second principle, Don't quit before the miracles happen. With God's help, the changes that you have longed for are just steps away. Philippians 1 verse 6, express my heart. I am sure that you, excuse me, I am sure that God who began the good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task within you is is finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ returns. You know you can't do anything unless you get started. So how much faith do you need to get started? Matthew 17 verse 20 tells us, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. It's reassuring to know that you do not need large amounts of faith to begin the recovery process. You need only a small amount, as small as a mustard seed, to affect change, to begin to to move your mountains of hurts, hang-ups, and habits. Eternal life does not begin with death. It begins with faith. 
Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us what faith is. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith, even faith the size of a mustard seed, so small you can hardly see it, is the avenue to salvation. You can't find salvation through intellectual understanding, gifts of money, good works, or attending church. No, the way to find salvation is described in Romans 10, verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes, all you need is a little faith. If you put the faith you have in Jesus, your life will be changed. You will find hope in the only higher power, Jesus Christ. His spirit will come with supernatural power into your heart. It can happen to you. It happened to me. Tonight, I encourage you to take the step of hope. It will give you the courage to reach out and hold Christ's hand and face the present with confidence and the future with realistic expectancy. Simply put, my life without Christ is a hopeless end. With him, it is an endless hope. Thank you for letting me share that teaching this evening. And we are now gonna close with the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Have a good evening. Thank you, Miss Kim, for giving us that great lesson on hope. We appreciate that. Well, thank you all for tuning in today, and we'll see you in a few minutes for our group, and then we'll see you on Sunday for church at 8 and 10 a.m. No, 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. All right? So until then, we'll see you then. Bye.